Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to have some fun. We're going to mix in some redneck science with a little bit of real science, and we're going to play with some very powerful handguns. Now, a lot of you guys have said, why don't we see more revolvers on the Military Arms channel? Good question. Not a huge revolver fan. I have revolvers in my collection, obviously, but the revolvers can do some pretty cool stuff, all right? So we've brought out kind of an eclectic mix of what we're calling hand cannons, all right? We got some classic hand cannons and some new hand cannons. Let's just talk about what we brought out. Here we have a, an 80s classic. This is a 1911 with a Packmire upper chambered in 35 Remington. This would have been something that silhouette shooters back in the day would have had fun with or even people that wanted to do some handgun hunting. So it's just basically a drop-in conversion onto your existing 1911 frame and it's a bolt action uh, type style handgun conversion. Here's a gun you've seen here on the channel before. As the wind kicks up and this is the FK Bruno. This is a 7.5 FK. Uh, we've talked about this handgun before, we've done some ballistics tests with it, but this is an example of a modern hand cannon. This is a handgun that chambers that 7.5 FK, which is very similar to 9x25 Dillon, okay? But the difference is, is this one is capable, this caliber is capable of carrying that energy much further than the 9x25, so it actually does have some really cool applications. And it's a modern hand cannon. Revolvers, generally speaking, can do things that most automatics can't. Not all the time. Never speak in absolutes. The 50 AE, Desert Eagle, is an automatic that shoots a frickin' hand cannon round. But generally speaking, you're gonna find revolvers are more commonly chambered in those massive chamberings, those massive calibers. And this is a Smith & Wesson 460 Magnum. This little guy was at a local gun shop. They had it for over a year. They put it up on Gun Broker. They couldn't get rid of it. They gave me a smoking deal on some horse trading. And so this is my first modern hand cannon. The last one I bought back in the late 90s, it was a 454 Casul Ruger. No longer have it. This little handgun is a really popular handgun. This is Jason's and it's a polymer framed judged, horse judge. This one will shoot 410 and 45 long colt. So this is a popular little gun. People like them for truck guns, whatnot. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. We're gonna talk about the 410, what that has to offer, then the 45 long colt. Classic Hand cannon. At one time, this was the most powerful hand, uh, handgun known to man. Dirty Harry days. This is a Smith & Wesson Model 29 with an eight inch barrel. This is Jason's pistol. Uh, this is a very cool handgun. We brought out some 240 grain full house loads to see how that stacks up to some of the other guns that we brought out here this afternoon. Last but not least, yes, I have 10 millimeter automatics. Yes, 10 millimeter was design, designed originally around a handgun called the Bryn 10, but it makes a great revolver cartridge as well. So I brought back out my Ruger GP100 Champion to play around with some heavy ball from Buffalo Boar and some really cool loads from Underwood. We're gonna get some really cool data from this bad boy. This is our lab radar. You can find these over at Copper Custom. Typically, we keep them in stock. Doppler radar system. This will give us bullet velocity and it will give us the energy of the bullets so we can get a better understanding of just how powerful these various calibers are. Over here, this is where redneck and true science cross over. We have some Clear Ballistics, Ballistics Gelatin. The guys at Clear Ballistics do supply this for free to the channel. We'd like to thank them for supporting us and doing that. So this is uh, something we're gonna put the 460 Smith & Wesson into. Don't have a whole lot of experience with it. Literally, today is the first day I've ever shot it. Test firing it, drew some blood. That means I love the gun. So we, we're blood brothers now, but we're gonna put the 460 into gelatin and see how that goes. And then it's just gonna be a free for all. And this is where the redneck science takes over. We got ham hocks. We got melons, we got ketchup, we have bags of flour, and we have saccharin. This is rat poison for sweetener, and we do everything we can here at the Military Arms Channel to get this poison off the market. So we've got a whole bunch of this stuff to shoot, and we intend to have a good time, and we hope you enjoy this video. Kick back, get a cup of coffee, can of beer, whatever it is you do, and join us for this little voyage down hand cannon lane. Let's get started. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum. This, is, this one is a 300 grain bullet. Its parent case, believe it or not, is a 45 long Colt where a 454 Casul just stretched out. Think of a 38 Special and a 357 Magnum. So that's why I like this handgun over the 500 caliber version, the Smith & Wesson 500, because with this one, I can shoot 45 long Colts. My kid can shoot it. I can shoot 454, and I can shoot full house 460. Now with longer barrels, this handgun operates an insanely high pressure of right around 65,000 PSI. I mean, that's magnum rifle pressures. And this handgun is renowned for being able to push a bullet the fastest out of any handgun on the market, of course, with the appropriate barrel length, not this little three and a half inch barrel. 
But let's find out what this is going to give us. Got the lab radar all set up. Let's set it to record. It, this, this thing runs that ragged edge of handgun versus revolver. I'm sorry, handgun versus rifle velocity. So we have it set for handgun. Hopefully it will pick up these rounds as they go down range. All right, here we go. I'm going to read them off because Jason won't be able to see uh, the screen due to the sunlight. Here we go. First shot. And we got 1,557 feet per second out of this little three and a half inch barrel on shot number one. That concussion really rocks that, uh, that lab radar. 1537, that's a very little, uh, very, very, you know, little deviation there. And so, yeah, man, even at, at, at 20 yards, it's still doing 1473 feet per second with a 300 grain pill. That's impressive. Okay, that one's way down. That, that one is, uh, whoa, what am I saying? 2884? I think the concussion got to this gun, or got to the lab radar there. <laughs> I wish it was 3,000 feet per second with a 300 grain pill. There we go. That's more realistic. 1536, that's back in. We got a, an anomaly there. It didn't do 2,800 feet per second. I'd be picking metal out of my face. All right, yeah, we got one more round here. I think I have to get away from lab radar. I'm probably breaking it with a muzzle blast. 1525. Okay, so that's really good. That's really going to skew our numbers on average, but let's just say the thing's doing about 1530 feet per second with that 300 grain pill. And we'll go ahead and stop that. I'm kind of curious. That gives us a kinetic energy of 1549 feet, or I guess foot pounds, I'm sorry. 1549 foot pounds. Wow. That is a cannon. All right, let's see what else we got to play with. Look at that flying trash can, ladies and gentlemen. That massive, beautiful, gorgeous 45 caliber pill is about to take on 10 pounds of swine. I'm gonna tell you right now, first day at the range with this 460, and I'm in love. Holy cow, is this fun. I, I, I never really thought I would enjoy these hand cannons as much as I'm enjoying this handgun. All right, Mr. Ham, you are done. <laughs> Ouch! Ouch! It just gelled the inside of that ham. Hit it right in the middle. I think I hit the bone. We got more to shoot at. I only hit it on one side. I still got a whole big chunk I can hit over here. Ah, <laughs> look at that, dude. <laughs> oh my gosh. That just ripped that thing to shreds. I'll get an angle on that and we'll finish this thing off. <laughs> Pulled pork for lunch. All right, let's finish off what's left of that ham with my new best friend, and then let's have some fun with some ketchup. Woo! <laughs> that went sailing. That was a lot oh, of meat flying. <laughs> that was a lot of meat flying. It was no longer contained by that plastic wrapper, and it just went everywhere. Let's give it some blood to go with all that meat. <laughs> Woo! <sighs> I think we're going to become the uh, military magnum channel. <laughs> that's entirely too much fun. This is the biggest piece of meat that's left. Look at this. <laughs> oh. Pulled pork, anybody? <laughs> uh. Pure science, ladies and gentlemen, pure science. This is nothing but seriousness. This little handgun has 
another version coming to the U.S. We were at EWA in Germany. We got to see the new polymer framed handgun that's going to be much more affordable in the $1,500 price range. Will be available 9mm, 10mm, and 7.5 FK. But with the 7.5 FK loading, this is really a powerhouse. I've seen really large game animals fell to this round. So that's a, it's a very, very capable cartridge. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the more affordable version hit the U.S. market and being able to shoot 9 and 10 millimeter out of it along with the 7.5 FK. So more on that here soon. All right, so we got five rounds of the 7.5 FK loaded. We go ahead and have it set to, oh, you know what we gotta do, guys? We gotta set this thing to rifle velocity, I'm pretty sure. So let's go ahead and uh, back back out of this because I'm confident we're gonna have to set this to rifle. Uh, velocity range rifle. Let's see what we get here, okay? All right, record. Action on this thing is so buttery smooth. Man, this is a gorgeous handgun. All right, here we go. First round. 2,116 feet per second, still doing 2,000 feet per second with a 95 grain projectile at 20 yards. 2,125, 2,125 feet per second. 2,132. I mean, really, this is a rifle cartridge in a handgun for the most part. Pretty impressive. And accurate. Got another one, tw another 2,132. Shot four, so, yep. And let's go one more. Yeah, this thing's spot on. 2,136. All right, so that gives us Wow, check that out. So we got to have a kinetic energy of 962 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. That's no slouch. I love that 75. All right. Really cool stuff. Love the data. These little high velocity 95 grain rounds against uh, rat poison should be pretty devastating. Yep. <laughs> I never get tired of that. I never get tired of that. I, I, I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> Ride that recoil, Jason. Oh my God. It's got a little punch, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> little, just, just like the 44 Magnum, right? I had to tell you that so you'd shoot it. <laughs> all day I wasn't going to mess with this thing, all day. This is Jason's hand cannon, the 8-inch barreled 44 Smith & Wesson Model 29 with some Remington 240 grain full house loads. We have five rounds loaded and we got a new series set up here. Let's go ahead and hit record and let's see what this classic handgun gives us in terms of power. Fourteen hundred and three feet per second. Still doing thirteen hundred thirty five at 20 yards. Give it another one. 1374. 1358. I mean, that's pretty respectable. Granted, it's an 8-inch barrel. 1383. We've got one left. 1371. So, that, let's see. Series two, yes. Nope, not what I wanted. You wanna create a new series? No, I don't. Just wanna to get to the information. All right, perfect. Series two. Just tell me. There we go, all right. So we have a kinetic energy of 1,002 foot-pounds of energy. So that's no slouch. I mean, compare that to the short-barreled 460 and, uh, yeah, 460, I should say. <laughs> and that's 
fairly respectable. I mean, wow, that old 44 Magnum still has it. Holy jeez. <laughs> How much is on you? Oh my Look, God. Let me see the hand. Let me see the hand. <laughs> other hand. Roll the other hand over. You're bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible idea. Get closer, Jason. We, we want it on video, he said. That was a terrible idea. Oh, look at the mess you made. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, hey, we got a bunch of water. <laughs> That's 44 mag, huh? Look at you, dude. Oh, yeah. I'm... <laughs> it came right back at you. I'm done. <laughs> All right, guys, so here we go. We're gonna do a ballistics gel test with a 300 grain federal round. And uh, this is the stuff we did the velocity testing on. We're about five yards away from our gelatin blocks. We're using clear ballistics gel. Again, we'd like to thank them for supporting the channel by supplying these gelatin blocks. All right, and they're great blocks, guys. We've been using them for years. And the nice thing about them is they're reusable. I'm gonna go ahead and load up one round. Jason, you tell me when you're ready. Okay. okay, here we go, guys. All right. Looks like I hit a little left. Let's see what happened. Our blocks jumped a little bit because we're dumping some energy. They were setting together. This one got moved back. Let's go ahead and move them back together here and see if we can get a measurement on the uh, total penetration. So these are FBI length gel blocks. They're 16 inches in length. So you can see clearly where the bullet entered here and traverse two thirds of the second block. We'll put this right at the very tip. And we have 27 inches of penetration with the 300 grain round. You can see I hit just a little left to center. The bullet also took a slight turn to the left as it came through. It continued to travel in a straight line. It didn't invert itself. And keep in mind, this stuff doesn't show uh, temporary stretch cavities as prominently as FBI gelatin. But the great thing about the, the clear ballistics is it's very consistent, so it's a great test medium. So you can, you can get you know, consistent test results cross calibers and it's stable at room temperatures where FBI gelatin you have to keep it refrigerated which is very difficult to do this stuff you can just take it out throw it in the vehicle go to the range shoot go back cut it up and reuse it awesome stuff so that initial bloom is about six inches in we see most of the energy being dumped the stretch cavity is about two and a half inches across here the bloom continues it blooms again at about 12 inches in. So we have really nice energy dump and transfer through here, and then it's just a hole, so the bullet's slowing down and then comes to a rest again, right at 27 inches of penetration. So you're gonna find, even with those hollow points, you're gonna get really good penetration with this thing, and I would use this against dangerous game. But you can also do hard cast and really go after, after some thick skinned and thick boned animals. This thing is a beast, and that's out of a three and a half inch barrel. They get them up to like 14 inches in barrel length, where you're really gonna see a tremendous velocity increase. Now, the other thing that's cool about the 460 is that where the 500 and the 460 kind of run neck and neck with the 500 having a slight advantage at the shorter ranges, this thing pushes a bullet faster than any other handgun on the market that isn't a Wildcat or a rifle caliber. It runs at 65,000 PSI and it pushes this bullet so fast it maintains velocity at range so you can cleanly take a big game further with the 460 than you can with the 500 Smith & Wesson. Then you also have the capability of shooting 45 Long Colt, 454 Casul, and the full power 460s. All the way around, I am thoroughly impressed with the handgun and 
I'm probably addicted now to hand cannons. Too much fun. Great performance. One thing I want to talk about, guys, is something that has come up I've seen online. People are shooting 500s, which is the same frame as my 460. They get their thumb up there next to the cylinder gap, and it literally has torn the end of thumbs off by pictures I've seen on the internet. So what we're going to do is take one of these blocks, move it forward, and I'm going to put the 460 right next to this ballistics gel, which simulates human flesh, and we're going to see what type of a flame cut that cylinder gap will cause so we can demonstrate why you want to keep your digits away from the front of that cylinder when you fire the weapons. Revolvers have a slight gap between the barrel and the face of the cylinder. This is called the cylinder gap. It's right here. Hot expanding gases come out sideways. Now I've shot 38s with a deep hold and I've had my thumb up there like that and all you're going to get is a little bit of a powder burn with the smaller calibers. When you're shooting handguns like this based upon images I've seen, I've never tested this until now, I've seen people that have shot their 500 Smith & Wessons or 460s had their thumb there and it literally ripped the end of their thumb off. Let's see what happens when we take a 460 round, 300 grain full house load, and we fire it right next to ballistics gelatin, which simulates human flesh. You ready to go, Jason? All right, come on around here. This is where the cylinder gap was when it fired. And that ripped that open. Based upon what I'm seeing there, and that's just, that's muzzle blast, that's powder coming out from the end of the barrel here. But that flame cut right there tells me it will rip the flesh of your thumb if you get your thumb out there. So when you're shooting these magnum caliber handguns, let's go ahead and clear it. Weapon's empty. You do not want to get that thumb up there. Don't do a deep hold <laughs> and do that because you're going to wind up going to the hospital. And uh, yeah, be careful with them guys. They're not toys. All right guys, this is just for fun. This is the Packmeyer Dominator in 35 Remington, that's a 150 grain projectile in what is conventionally a rifle cartridge. To load it, I drop the round into this little slotted groove, or the dirt, take your pick, one for my homies. Not the easiest gun in the world to load, especially with a scope on it. Come on, I think I, I have to drop it one more time before this actually works. All right. So the round sits in there like that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and close the bolt. Lock it down. Then to fire it, I have to put the, the safety up. All right, we're gonna leave it on safe for now. We got this all set up. It's set for rifle velocity, 150 grain bullet. And go ahead and put the weapon on fire. <laughs> got a little punch to it. Wow, man. 2,027 feet per second. Still doing 1980 at 20 yards, all right? We're gonna go ahead and cock it. There we go, get the spent case out. Not the fastest gun in the world to load. <laughs> Grab one more round here. Woohoo, didn't drop it. All right, here we go, number two. Wow, that muzzle blast, 2,013 feet per second. All right. One more round here. I think I'd rather have a 460. All right, come on. Definitely faster follow-up shots. <laughs> All right, there we go, last one. All right, 2,028 feet per second. And that gives us a very impressive 1,369 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. That's no slouch. So the trade-off is slow to load, 
puts a lot of power down range. Another 300 grain pill out of the 460. Got six bags of flour. And at the very end of the stack, we have a two liter bottle of rat poison. Let's see what we get. Think it's gonna make it through, Jason? I don't know. Wow, it didn't. Check this out, man. And we think we might be able to recover the round. Came through here, here, it started to hook. I think it's in this bag, dude. That's a souvenir. Wow. One, two, three, four, and into the fifth. That thing's hot, dude. Feel that thing. That thing is hot. Incredible. Flour? You strap about five bags of flour to your chest, you got some pretty decent body armor. Stop a 460. <laughs> We have Jason's little judge out here. We're gonna shoot some 45 Long Colt. This is a 225 grain pill from uh, Federal. It's an American Eagle brand. So let's see what this little tiny lightweight polymer framed pocket rocket, <laughs> it's a tongue twister, can pull off. All right, it's recording. Shot number one. Very manageable. 774 feet per second out of what is probably I don't know, two inch barrel if that. <laughs> All right. Uh, pretty anemic. 45 ACP is more powerful out of a 1911. 761, 761 feet per second. 776. 750. And 724. So that's going to give us, if I can remember how to do this again, I keep screwing it up. There we go. So that's given us uh, <laughs> a kinetic energy of 261 foot pounds of, uh, of muzzle energy. Pretty anemic. Five shots of this. Now you can get some warmer 45 Long Colt. There are hotter loads out there. But um, yeah, I think I'd rather have a 1911 or something 45 ACP. Maybe even 45 gap. <laughs> Not. <laughs> we have some Underwood ammunition. This is 135 grain round that's advertised at 1600 feet per second out of what gun and barrel length? I don't know, so let's find out. All right, it claims 1600 feet per second. Let's see what that gives us in actual energy. All right, hit record. Mild recoil. 1,557, so 1,557 out of this little gun, that's right at the advertised velocity. Good job, Underwood. So we're still doing 1,422 feet per second at 20 yards. That's really respectable. Very manageable. 1,536, 1,536. 1,529. 1521, 1551, this thing's doing really, really good. Yeah, that's five rounds. Okay, so 1551, let's go ahead and stop that. And that's not what I wanted to do. Let's see. That gives us a muzzle energy of 721 feet per second. So right now the 45 long coal, or not 7 feet per second, 721 foot pounds of muzzle energy. And so far the 45 long Colt is the biggest pud gun out here. It doesn't belong in the mix of hand cannons, does it? <laughs> 10 millimeters holding its own, man. 
In the name of Redneck Science, we're going to try to figure out which one of these handguns makes the biggest pop of a rat poison bottle. All right, so first up is Jason's 44 Magnum, 240 grain full house load. That's a pretty darn big pop. <laughs> no pun intended. All right, all right. What do we got here? This is Jason's anemic little judge. This thing has a bullet on the top and then it has two buckshot balls underneath it and an anemic powder charge. I think we've determined this gun does not belong out here today. And because it's shooting a duplex load or whatever you want to call it, we're going to step forward a little bit and see if I can even hit that thing with these goofy rounds. Whoa, hey, that did okay. Not 44 Magnum, but Jason, that might deserve its own ballistics gel test. All right, put that one away. 10 millimeter. This one is one of the 1,575 feet per second rounds that we clocked. Come on, 10 millimeter. Give us a good show, buddy. I know you can make a mess of this. Yes! Yes, 10 millimeter does not let me down. All right. Come on, guys. We got to make sure we get in a safe direction for this one. I think we know who the king of the hill is this afternoon. My best friend, the 300 grain, <laughs> 460 Smith & Wesson. Bye-bye, rat poison. Holy shnikes! <laughs> king of the hill, no doubt, this thing would stop a elephant in its tracks. <laughs> Entirely too much fun. Entirely too much fun. We hope you guys enjoyed today's video coming out, getting a little bit of redneck science mixed in with some real science and playing around with some modern hand cannons and also some classic hand cannons. If you guys like this type of video, be sure to comment down below. Also, push that little notification bell down just below the video and uh, get notified when we post new videos. Again, if you like this type of content, please like and share it and we'll make more of it. We certainly have a good time making these technical type of videos, mixing in a little bit of redneck science for fun. All right, guys, if you'd like to support us, one way you can do that is to swing by Copper Custom and check out some of the firearms and accessories we have for sale over there. Also, you'll find some pretty cool stuff because every once in a while, Copper will stumble into a collection of some pretty cool guns like the 35 Remington, which will be made available to you guys. Also, we are Twitch gamers, so if you're a Patreon supporter, send us a note, let us know what your Patreon name is. We'll add you as a friend, and you can join us in some Twitch live streams where we're playing some pretty fun video games and World of Warships just came out and we're starting to learn that one. So you'll see us streaming that here very soon. Guys, thanks for 11 years of support and we'll talk to you guys soon. Got to finish off these last two uh, rat poison bottles. Not very powerful, you know why? <laughs> Taking advantage of the fact that my 460 can shoot 45 long colt. <laughs> it's like shooting a pop gun. <laughs> we'll see you guys soon.